People who have been in narcissistic relationships have experienced a lot of abuse on many different levels. Maybe verbal, emotional, financial, mental or even physical. They were controlled and manipulated by the narcissist on almost every aspect of life. These toxic relationship patterns often lead to the victim feeling off balance, confused and unable to react and do something about it. The pain and shame about the situation just grow stronger, together with self-doubt and the question if they maybe are the issue. Being in a relationship with a narcissist is a horrible experience and the victims are slowly losing themselves and their identity. They become more and more pawns of the narcissist, able to be controlled, used and abused at will. All of this toxicity can lead to some strange behaviors once the victim finally manages to break the trauma bond and get out. Being lied to all the time, they are now very careful when it comes to other people and have a huge tendency to doubt everything. They will question what others say, if not openly, then quietly in their mind. Was that a genuine compliment? Or is he trying to manipulate me? Does she really want to help me? Or will she use that against me somehow? Second guessing everything what others say or do is actually quite normal behavior when you really think about what someone who has been in a narcissistic relationship has been gone through. Nothing the narcissist said was ever genuine. They are masters at manipulating others and twisting and treating words and situations in a way that they are the victims. But from the outside, from a perspective of someone who has never been in a narcissistic relationship, questioning and doubting everything what others say or do might seem very strange. Just like the next behavior that people who have been in narcissistic relationships often adopt. Hypervigilance. After having endured months, years, sometimes even decades of toxicity, abuse and being in constant fear that the narcissist may explode and rage, the victims become extremely hypervigilant. The nervous system is in constant survival mode after such an experience and everything and everyone gets questioned to make sure to never endure this craziness and abuse ever again. For some people this may last for years or even the rest of their lives where they just mistrust anyone around them and can't form any proper connections or relationships anymore. Often even therapy cannot properly help with that as it often fails to address the underlying root causes and issues. If that's the case for you, it's crucial to change your approach and not just talk about your problems and try to understand them, but use subconscious healing modalities to not just resolve the trauma that the narcissist caused, but also the trauma from deep childhood wounds that caused you to end up in this toxic relationship to begin with. But more about that and how you can fully resolve your wounds and heal at the end of the video. The hypervigilance can become so extreme that the victims completely self-isolate. They are too afraid to be hurt again and see nothing but red flags and toxicity everywhere. So they rather stay by themselves and don't have any major contact to other people anymore. Complete self-isolation is a sad testament of how cruel, wicked and painful a narcissistic relationship really can be, especially for someone who has been stuck in it for years. The pain was so strong that the victims rather stay alone and by themselves often for the rest of their lives than to risk ever being hurt by a narcissist again. Which is understandable if you really look at the toxicity of a narcissistic abusive relationship. But self-isolation is not necessary to avoid narcissists and to make sure to never end up with one again. Unfortunately, I see the following with many people and also with my own clients. They go to therapy for years, sometimes decades, to help them heal from narcissistic abuse. But all they get is a better understanding of what happened and why it happened, a few coping skills and a laundry list of red flags. All of this can't help them to heal sustainably and avoid narcissistic relationships completely because the underlying subconscious issues are still unaddressed. 
which often causes them to end up in the next toxic relationship. Here's an example of one of my former clients. She was in therapy for over a decade and still ended up in another narcissistic relationship and she thought she would be triggered and hurt for the rest of her life. Here's her answer to one of my stories where I talked about how therapy often just addresses triggers but doesn't heal the underlying causes. So you become very aware of the issue but you don't have a mechanism to actually resolve it. So my story is here on the left. Uh, before I read it, I want to clearly say I'm not talking about all therapy here, but I see it unfortunately very, very often. I way too often hear people saying, I will always have triggers and pain, which doesn't have to be true. But sadly, this is what they learned in therapy. So they are not even open to the possibility that they don't have to and that it can change. And then one of my former clients replied to that. This is how I lived my life for years. It was so hard because I felt hopeless. I had the awareness of why I was feeling what I was feeling, but the pain was so big. After our work together, I can finally say I am healed from my trauma. I still have feelings that come up, but they don't consume me. I feel them and I'm able to process them and move on. As you can see, addressing and resolving your wounds on a subconscious level can help you to actually heal. Instead of learning different behaviors and coping skills, my approach is to resolve the cause of what brought you into a narcissistic relationship to begin with, so that you won't need to learn a laundry list of red flags or toxic relationship signs, but you will just have a natural tendency to stand up for yourself put boundaries in place and avoid toxic people. Because the reason of why you ended up with toxic people in the first place is not there anymore. But what now exactly caused you to end up with a narcissist? And even more importantly, how can you heal that? I explain that in depth in the video right over there. If you're truly ready and committed to heal, get a piece of paper and something to take notes on and watch the video. I'll see you right over there.